680's Richard Southern joins us now with today's business news. Richard, let's start with those layoffs announced today at Hudson's Bay. Yeah, it's breaking news here the, uh, this afternoon. Janela, 2,000 jobs being cut at Canada's oldest retailer. Hudson's Bay announcing uh, the 2,000 layoffs across its North American operations. So that means some of these cuts will be at uh, Saks Fifth Avenue stores in the U.S., which Hudson's Bay uh, recently bought. All these job cuts will happen before the end of the year. Some of them were actually pre-announced back in February, but it comes as the Bay reports a loss of $221 million for the first quarter. The Bay is losing money. This is the same story that's affecting a lot of big box retail these days. Money that used to go to the Bay, that used to go to Sears and other big names like that, it's going online now. It's going to names like Amazon. And so you're seeing these big box retailers scrambling to try and keep pace, and uh, they're cutting uh, jobs as a result. Mm. Uh, Hudson's Bay stock lower today, and it's down 27% this year. Janelle. Wow. All right. From the Comey testimony to a UK election, there's no shortage of market moving events today. How did the stocks respond? It was a busy one, but you know, in the end, and you saw it off the top there, stocks actually closed higher. A 50 point gain for the TSX, an eight point gain for the Dow, the NASDAQ at an all time high, even with Mr. James Comey appearing there on Capitol Hill, facing tough questions, talking about uh, how he felt uh, Trump may have uh, been asking him to drop an investigation into Michael Flynn, the former national security advisor. Ultimately, though, as far as investors are concerned, there was nothing new on impeachment. That's really the only thing the markets care about. Will there be an impeachment proceeding for Trump? Because impeachments in the past has, has led to lo lower stock valuations. Nothing really new on that front, so the markets look past Comey. The U.K. elections could be a different story and that could actually end up boosting stocks. The polls have closed in Britain, and the exit polling numbers we're getting in show that while Theresa May's conservative party may win, she will not get a majority, and she is in favor of Brexit. So the fact that she won't have a majority may boost stocks tomorrow. So we'll see what the morning after reaction is, Janella, All on right. that big UK election. We'll keep watching that. Now, if you're headed to the gas pump, it looks like the numbers are going to be moving in a favorable direction. Yeah. Got some good news for you. Oil has been selling off, and so the result is gas going down three cents a liter here in Toronto tonight, bringing the average down to about a dollar eight point nine. So hold off if you can on that fill up, Janella. All right. Now some restaurants are banning fidget spinners. I don't know if you've seen these little toys, but that's led chefs to start using them as kitchen gadgets. I want to show you this video. This is from a chef at a Houston restaurant, and he posted this showing how, yeah, a fidget spinner might be now the go-to gadget to have. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. So, you know, he got the fidget spinner there, and it, it sort of sprays out some of the sauce, and, you know, you put a little bit of uh, uh, protein and salad in the middle of the plate, and my goodness, the fidget spinner just might be a must-have gadget in the kitchen. This post by this chef was a response uh, to uh, Chef Eric Rupert, a very, very famous chef. Uh, he had posted how uh, a picture of a fidget spinner he confiscated off of one of his chefs, and he said he was banning fidget spinners in his restaurants, but apparently there might be some use for them yet in the kitchen. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, is the makeup business the next to be upended by technology? You're uh, taking a look at some new eye-opening eyelashes. Yeah, I want to show you these LED eyelashes. Oh. About <laughs> About to hit the market, yes, indeed. Uh, industrial designer Tim Pham, who uh, developed these, showing off his invention. The lashes are interactive, so the lights move as you move your head from left to right, and they go on and off as you jump up and down. The lashes are equipped with a uh, three-volt watch battery that clips on to your hair, so there is a small translucent, translucent wire that goes from the lashes to the back of your head. Uh, the team behind these launching a Kickstarter this summer to fund production of the L. ED lashes. Watch out for, for electric shocks, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be wearing those on air anytime soon. <laughs> okay, and finally, years after banishing it, Tim Hortons is set to revive one of its most famous donuts. Which one is it? Ah, it, it's, it's my the favorite. Dutchie. You like the Dutchie? I love the Dutchie, and I get a lot of flack for it because people don't like raisins. Oh, it's, <laughs> no, it's true. It's, you either like raisins or you hate them. But a Dutchie, it's a classic Canadian donut. Actually, it was made famous by Tim Hortons. It was on their original menu back in the early 60s. They got rid of it three years ago, but the Dutchie returning on a limited time basis to Mark Canada's 150th birthday. So there you go, Janelle. I'm get excited. Your Dutchie while you can. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. I'll send it over to Faiza Amin. Thanks.